Could there be a connection between traveling gypsies and all of the clown sightings? I attempted to get to the bottom of all the staggering clown sighting, as of September 19, 2016 there have been reports of sighting in Texas, Indiana, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Virginia, and Tennessee. I am sure by now I am missing a few. I have found from numinous attempts people were not very forthcoming with information, on my way back from South Carolina I stopped in at a truck stop and grabbed me a coffee. I overheard a few truck drivers talking about a guy by the name of Big Red that had the only theory that made any sense. I butted into their conversation and explained to them who I was. Hoping I could gather some more information for my clown stories. They both pointed me in the direction of a very large order man. Sitting at a table reading a paper. Walking over I said. You must be Big Red the one with the clown information. Big Red chuckled for a moment and then looked at me with a very serious face one that I don't see in many people that I talk to. Big Red said there is only one thing that rings right. Please tell I said. Well Big Red said most folks have forgot we have Irish travelers or traveling American gypsies. He said mind you most are harmless, most have formed groups to hide from one thing or another such as legal issues. Others are far worse they're pedophiles, sex offenders that have decided to run, others are wanted for scams and murder. You're all of the time reading about a little old lady that got some home repair scam pulled on them or something worse. The number of travelers living in the United States is estimated to be somewhere between 112,000 to 400,000. Joking I said that's a lot of clowns. Not paying much to my comment he went on they traveled across the land doing seasonal work. Although widely scattered, they are somewhat concentrated in the southern states. Their communities can be found in Texas, Indiana, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Some 1,500 Irish travelers live in a 25-square-mile unincorporated community called Murphy Village in South Carolina. Although they are also scattered in mobile home parks across the Deep South, Murphy Village is by far the largest, most affluent, and best known of Irish travelers' enclave. He said not saying it was them but I bet you they have an idea. If they are using candy and have weapons they're trying to take kids, maybe their populations are low between you and me let's hope that's all as a truck driver you hear some sick stuff out here on the road. Travelers live to serve their citizens as comfortable havens and refuges in the short, southern winters. In the spring, however, those communities are more like military staging areas from which forays of pickup trucks and vans depart to raid the rest of the nation. The men depart for a summer's scavenging, leaving wives, children, and the elderly behind to keep the home fires banked and the air conditioners churning until the men return at the end of the school year. At that time the entire family will take to the road. In addition to leaving their families behind, the departing men usually leave their identities at home, assuming new names that are documented by bogus social security cards, driver's licenses, credit cards, etc. Should legal mishaps occur on the road, they certainly don't want their identities traced to their home community. Once they have crossed the state line, Travelers are likely to pull into the first rest area and change license plates. Travelers from Murphy Village have been found in possession of current, valid license plates from Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Texas as well as South Carolina. If they got your kids you can't find them Big Red went on to say. Big Red went on to say watch out for house and barn painters, driveway dressers, lightning rod installers, and so on. They can bring tears to the eyes of their victims when they explain the tragic circumstances which force them to sell trailers or campers made in Indiana. They will prune your trees, seal your roof, exterminate your termites, and keep you engaged while a cohort steals your nest egg and makes off with the colonial twist silverware that has been in the family for five generations or your kids. As for why their populations are low well most of the other groups. 
marriages are contracted by the parents when the children are mature. The young couple is consulted before the final decisions are reached, and the arrangements are ordinarily made two or three years before the wedding is to take place. The parents inevitably choose spouses for their children from among the travelers, using such unions to solidify family friendships and business arrangements. While children are allowed to marry outside the village if they choose, they never do so. These children know that the culture of the travelers is far too different to that of the dominant society for marriage with a non-traveler to be successful. After years of this there has been or had to have been a lot of inbreeding. I am sure somewhere there's a whole lot of them that look like the cast from Wrong Turn. But don't get me wrong there are some good gypsies out there they will do anything to help you but there are a lot of bad ones. So it wouldn't shock me if a few were dressing up as clowns by night to find and take children home to their groups. There's one thing about it all Big Red said. After all of that it took me a minute to get the world what out. These guys are clowns by night and just like us by day, one could walk by us right now and we wouldn't even know it. I don't mind you using my story, however do me one favor tell the parents in the places where the clowns have been sighted. Don't let your kids out after dark right now it's just not safe, and kids don't sneak out either you may end up at a new home, one you probably will not like. Well after that I got into my car and went home. Stay paranoid my friends.